In this video I'm going to show you five ways to transfer a design onto a piece of fabric ready for stitching on. So before we get going I just want to mention briefly a few things about transferring a design. Um, one is take the time to do it properly um, because if you don't do this stage right it can affect the next stage so it's worth doing this bit really well. Um, the second thing is iron your fabric. <laughs> so many people who don't iron their fabric before they stitch on it, so easy to do, it will make a massive difference, iron your fabric first. And I just want to talk briefly as well about whether you put your design on before you put your fabric on the frame or after. Now it depends a little bit on which technique you use and there are four against for and against for both. So I'm just going to run through those quickly. Um, so if you put your design on your fabric before you put it on the frame, when you frame it up and you, especially in a ring frame, you tighten your ring frame, then you can distort the design a bit. So that method will work well for small designs because they won't distort, but the bigger the design, the more easily it will distort. So I suggest if you've got a large embroidery design, frame that up first and then put your design on. If you've got a small one, you can get away with putting it on the fabric first and then framing it up. Framing the fabric onto um, or into a frame before you start will give you a nice firm surface to transfer the design onto and it's less likely things will move. In the first method that I'm going to show you we're going to need to tape it down and things can shift a little bit so you do get a nice firm surface to work on. One disadvantage of framing it up before you put the design on is you often need a backing fabric on the back. Well, I often use a backing fabric. And if you want to use the light box method where the light shines through, then you can't see it clearly because you've got two layers of fabric. So you'll need to do that on one layer of fabric. Um, and the final thing is if you wanted to stitch something in your hand, um, if you were doing a quilt, for example, or you wanted a hanging or a cushion, um, you might not want to frame that up tightly because then when you relax the fabric, the design moves. So that would be an instance where you would want to put the design on first onto the fabric first. Okay, so let's get going with method number one. So this is the design that I'm going to use, some little acorn and a leaf. This is free to download from the website if you want to have a go yourself. Just click the link in the description below this video to download that. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take my design to my light box. Now I have a professional light box here. If you don't have a light box, you can just use a window. Absolutely fine. Just tape it to a window. Obviously, make sure you've got some good light behind. So just a bit of tape on each corner so it doesn't move. Like so. And I'm going to transfer it onto a piece of our linen. So we're going to make sure the design is in the middle. I can see a little bit through that already, so I'm happy that I know that that's in the center behind my fabric. I'm just going to do one of the acorns. So I'm going to take that fabric down as well. So everything's nice and secure and it's not going to move. Now I just want to show you the pens that I'm going to use to trace with. You can use several different things to trace. You can use a pencil if you want to, although the pencil can come off onto the fabric when you stitch. This is an aqua trick marker. So this is um, water soluble. So you can draw on with it and then you can spray it lightly with water afterwards. And if you can see any left, it will disappear. And this is just a drawing pen. This happens to be a uni pin fine liner, um, but you just need to know that you need a permanent waterproof um, pen so that it doesn't come off if your design should get wet. So I'm going to use that one, but you can use whichever one you like. So I'm going to turn my light box on, like so. Now just take care when you're doing this, everything's secured down nice and firmly so I'm just going to very lightly follow the design through the fabric. Now if you can't see the design you can just go over it with a, a black pen to make it more visible through your fabric and this is one of those instances where you don't want a backing fabric behind it as well so if you had it in a frame and you had a backing fabric on it you wouldn't be able to see this design through both layers of fabric so this is a good one to do just on 
the fabric on its own and I'm just going very lightly if I press I will move the fabric so just very lightly over my design as carefully as you can as accurately as you can And then if I turn my light box off, I can just make sure that I've covered all my lines. I can see everything clearly. I've missed a bit. I can just turn it back on again and go over that piece that I've missed. So that's all there is to it. I can take that fabric off. And it's ready for framing up in my frame. So this method we're going to use carbon or graphite transfer paper this is what it looks like here um, you can buy it from stationers and haberdasheries and it's available for lots of places online so quite easy to get and it's actually this is what it looks like out of the packet it's a piece of quite fine sort of tracing paper with a layer of graphite on it so like the stuff that comes in a pencil um, so do be careful when you touch it because if you rub it it will come off on your fingers and you get it all over your fabric so touch it as little as you can So I've taped my fabric down to a fairly hard surface for this help. So I've done it on a cutting mat, but something, just an ordinary table will be fine, something quite firm. And I've taped it down in quite a few places because this can move quite easily. So the fabric goes down first, then the graphite paper goes down with the graphite face down. That's important, that bit. And then you can put your design on the top. Now the hard thing with this is just working out where the middle is. So can just take that down actually just put a little bit just to hold it in place design on the top and you just sort of have to eyeball it a little bit to make sure you've got it in the middle I'm just going to take the design down as well but only at the top which will become apparent why in a minute now my weapon of choice here is a ballpoint pen or a biro preferably one that doesn't work um, strangely because you're sort of using it like a stylus really so I find it easier if it doesn't draw all over the design as well but a normal biro that does work it will be absolutely okay I'm just going to press into the design which will go through the transfer paper and onto your fabric so let's try that now knowing how hard to press is the key with this one so fairly hard but not so hard you rip through the paper so I've just done the bottom of that acorn cup and I'm going to lift it up and see if I can just see if it's worked or not. So I can lift the transfer. Now it has come through, but I think I can probably go a little bit harder with that. So just lay those back down, go over that again, follow those lines as accurately as you can. Pressing a bit harder now. So before I take that off, I'm just going to check again, make sure that's all come through. Okay, I'm quite pleased with that. And you'll see the design where it's picked up the carbon from the paper onto your fabric. You'll see that there on your paper. So I'm quite happy with that. If you can't see any of it, you can just go over it again. As long as you don't move your paper, you'll be fine. So we can just take the design away do be careful not to sort of scratch this while you've got it down because you will make marks on it so just lift this off carefully you can use this again you can see the design but there's lots more carbon on that so that can be used again which is a good thing and there's my design again ready for framing up 
So you need a couple of specialised things for this method. So the first one, you'll need an iron-on transfer pen. This one is made by Prim and it's got a little iron on it. So you can tell it's an iron transfer pen. Um, look online for one of these and you'll find a supplier for that. And then you'll need some tracing paper as well. So quite thick paper, which we're going to use to actually iron onto. So make sure it doesn't melt um, under an iron. So good thick tracing paper will work well for that. Now, the most important thing about this technique is we're going to draw on the tracing paper with the pen and then we flip the tracing paper over and it's the pen that transfers to the fabric so you need to do your design in reverse that's really important so I've drawn another one on the design I've got them both ways round, so you can choose which way round you want it so I'm just going to trace my design with the iron-on transfer pen So there we go. Now this pen is quite thick, it's hard to get a fine line on it so just go as carefully as you can with it. I'm just going to do one more thing as well before I finished. I'm going to come over this side and I'm just going to draw the acorn. It doesn't have to be too careful with this because I want to try out how hot my iron needs to be before I do it. So I've just got a little tester piece that I can try out. So let's go to the ironing board. So I'm just going to try my test piece first to make sure my iron is hot enough. Now it does say you need your iron quite warm for this, so I'm not going to put it on the top heat. I'm just going to bring it down a touch from that. And this is the way I drew it, so it's pointing to the right, so I need to turn it over. That's really important. Like so, and I'll just come down here and I can try it a few times. So I'm just going to hold this in place. I'm not worried about fixing this down because I'm just trying it out. just lightly across with your iron you can just lift it up and see if that's taken now it's starting to take so it just needs to be a little bit more so you can either just iron it for longer which I think is probably safer mind your fingers that's taken quite well now so I'm happy with the temperature of it and I know that I need to iron it for a little bit longer now one other good thing about this I just want to tell you about now is that you can use your design again so as long as you've got the pen still on the paper you've still got some left to use so if you wanted to make a little spray of acorns that one's come out much better so I think the iron is warming up a little bit so you can just keep going with it so really nice method to use if you want to do several of the same design yeah coming out really nicely so I've got three good ones out of that so let's see how many we can get while we're here so yeah it's just beginning to fade now so four or five out of that one so I'm happy with the temperature of my iron so let's try it with the actual one got my fabric in place so remember you need to turn it over so I drew on that side turning it over so it's the right way around I can clearly see where the middle of this one is you can take this down if you want to just don't iron over the tape but I'm just going to hold it by hand I know from my little sample piece how long I need to do it for so I'm just going to try that now you can choose how dark you want that to be. I would probably leave it at that to stitch because I'm happy I can see that. But I'm just going to go over it a little bit more so you can see it clearly. There we go. And I've got my design 
on my fabric. Now this particular brand of pen it does have some instructions on the back on how to use it and it is permanent so if we go wrong it won't come out which is a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you look at it so it is permanent so you need to get it right first go but it won't come out later if you want to wash your embroidery. So this method is really great if you want to do a technique such as black work or white work where you might have some edges that are not solid. So here we've got a line around the edge so if you drew your black line for your design that would be fine but around the top the stitches are just broken up and you don't want a solid design line around there so this method is really great for this technique. Okay so I've got my outline design and what I'm going to use for this is a piece of tissue paper so this isn't tracing paper this is thinner this is tissue paper and it needs to be thin because we're going to rip it off later so i'm just going to place that over the top of the design i want to trace now i'm got, not going to stick this down because it's delicate if i stick it down i'm worried about ripping it and i don't want to rip it till later so i'm just going to hold this in place it's a small design if you had a bigger one you could stick it at the edges that would be fine i'm going to use my permanent pen I have seen this done in pencil before but um, the pencil can come off on the thread and if you're doing it on a white fabric that will show so I'm going to use my permanent pen I'm just going to trace the design carefully just as I've done previously just to stem down the center carefully as I can and that's all I need to do so now my design is on the tissue paper and now we can go and put it on the fabric so I'm going to put my fabric in a frame for this one. I find it easy to have two hands to do this bit with. So I've got a piece of counted fabric because I think I might turn this into a piece of black work. So I'm doing it on a different fabric um, and I'm going to put the tissue paper on the fabric and stitch through it. So let me show you how to do that. The look is on. Right, so there's my design that I've just drawn. I'm going to place that in the middle. I've just turned it round so it fits onto the camera better, but it doesn't matter which way you do this because you're just transferring it. So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to pin the tissue paper in place. Now I'm going to use just an ordinary sewing cotton to sew this onto the fabric. And I've got two colours and I'll explain why that is shortly. So I'm going to start with this red colour for no particular reason and um, just a single strand of it and I'm just going to stitch this fabric to the tissue paper tissue paper to the fabric just with big basting stitches so I'm just going to go around the edge huge big stitches but I just want this tissue not to move and I'm attaching it so I'm just going to go all the way around the edge my design. I'll take my pin out when I've done it and I can just sort of smooth it out as I go round. And these stitches will hold it when I take the pins out. So just smooth out the design so there's as few wrinkles as possible. pins out as I go. I've just gone around the edge so everything inside it is secure and it's not going to move and if you want to put a few extra stitches in you can do that because this will all get removed later so just a couple of extra holding ones just to make it even more secure like so. That's all it needs. So it's on nice and secure. It's not going to move. So I'm going to change colour now. I'm going to use a green. And I'm going to stitch all the way around this design line now. And I'm just going to use a running stitch. I'll show you what that is. Now what you do need to do is have quite a secure end here because we're going to rip this tissue paper off and it will leave the stitches behind and that will be our 
removable outline. So I'm going to just work a couple of stitches straight up and down through the tissue paper to secure the end because when I pull the tissue paper off I don't want to pull the stitches out at the same time. So just securing the end of the thread now and then I'm going to come up at the end I'm just going to work a running stitch along that design line. Now you want more of the stitch showing on the top than you do underneath so they're longer stitches on the top with a small gap in between and that means you can see more of the design on the top than you can underneath so quite a long stitch on the top small gap and follow that line as carefully as you can quite difficult with this one to get a really accurate design so take extra care when you're doing the stitches to follow your design lines shorten them when you get to a curve so that you can get more stitches around the curve I'll just show you a curve and then I'm going to zip around the whole thing and then show you what I'm going to do next so nice and tight around the curve smaller stitches to get the shape and then when you get a straight bit you can just lengthen the stitches again these stitches will all be removed by the time you've finished your embroidery so you won't see any of these so they don't have to be nice and even but they do have to be accurate on your design. So I'm just going to carry on all the way around the leaf shape and then I want to show you just one little trick to do when you get to the next bit. So I'm just coming to the end of my leaf now. Longer stitches up here because it's just a straight line, don't need to be tiny stitches but at the end I'm going to finish that thread off again just with two small stitches on that stem so that when I pull the tissue off it doesn't pull all my stitches out at the same time. So just two stitches straight up and down. I'm going to come back to the top, cut that off. Now a little tip for you is if you change colour now when you pull the paper off you'll be able to see the elements more clearly. So in a little design it doesn't matter so much but in a big design when you pull the paper off you end up with a whole piece of fabric full of running stitches and you can't tell what's what so if you change the colour for the different areas of the design then you can clearly see them so I'm going to use the red again now for the acorn so I'm not over there so secure the end again come up at the end and then just exactly the same as I've done before just in a different colour so now I will be able to see the acorn clearly from the leaf and you could use as many colours as you find helpful if you think it'd be useful to do the actual um, bottom part the cup of the acorn in a different colour you could do that if you like and it doesn't matter what colours you use really just make sure you can see it on your fabric and then off I go again around the whole shape and then I'll show you how to take the tissue paper off. Okay so I'm at the end, just finished that off securely, cut that off, now let's get the tissue paper off. <laughs> you going to help me get the tissue paper off? <laughs> Are you? Okay. Right, a bit in the way really. I need to do the next bit, thank you. <laughs> the centre of attention. Yes, no. <laughs> I, I guess I'll have to wait till you've moved then. Okay, you might 
want to do this without the cat here but I'm going to just pretend she's not there and carry on as normal she's quite happy so we're going to get the tissue paper off now so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the tacking stitches Oops. so just cut through those pull them out Now the easiest way is to rip off the outer bit so all of this just carefully so go quite slowly with this because if you just rip it off the stitches will pull so I'm just going to pull the outside bit off first. Now I've taken the most of it off so the way to get the finer bits off is to pull it away from the stitches. So I'm not pulling up, I'm just pulling away. Now we've got a little bit inside as well so you can just rip that bit there. A pair of tweezers helps a lot in this. just want to take a bit off where the thread is so that you can see what's left there we go that's coming away quite nicely so it's quite time consuming this method but it is great for techniques like black work there we go look so there's half of it with the tissue paper on and half off and you can see the shape of my oak leaf there so I'm going to take all of it off and then I'll take it off the frame and turn it around and you can see what the effect is at the end okay so I pulled all the tissue paper off so let me show you what that looks like so the cat's not going to move, I'm afraid, because she likes the heat from the light. So do excuse the cat underneath, but this is what it looks like. So you can see the running stitch where the green leaf is. I'll just put that on and see if she minds. Oh, no, she doesn't. So you can see the green running stitch where the leaf is and the red for the acorn. So using the two colours works really well, actually. You might have to fiddle a bit just to get the tissue out from between the, the, the small areas, but it works pretty effectively um, for your black work and white work techniques. We have a set of materials for this um, method now. This is our Prick and Pounce set. You can get that from our shop. There's a link in the description below. We also have a quite comprehensive video on this technique as well. So if you want to know more about this in detail, you can see that up here now. Um, but I'm going to run through it quickly now so you know how to do it in comparison to the other ones that we've been looking at. So let's jump in and see how to do the Prick and Pounce method. Okay, so I've drawn the design again from my PDF download from my printed off page and I've drawn this one on the tracing paper, so the thicker one, not the tissue paper, the tracing paper. And what we need to do is we need to make little holes in this and we're going to rub some powder through the holes. So This is a mat, a pricking mat, and I've got a pricker here, so I'm going to make the holes with this. Need these bits on. So quite close together and along the lines again as accurately as you can all the way around the whole design. Okay, so I've gone around the whole design there. You can go a little bit closer together where you've got a curve so that you can see the curve more clearly and you can just hold it up and make sure that you've covered the whole design and that you've put holes through the whole thing. So I'm not going to fasten this down, you can if you want, but this is a small design, so I'm just going to hold it in my hand, but if you want to tape it down, you can. So place it in the centre of your fabric. Now I'm not putting this one on a frame, I want to show you two methods for this one. So this one without putting it on a frame. And I'm going to use grey powder. Now if you're using a, a light colour fabric, don't go for black necessarily, that's too strong. The grey one will work well, so you get white and grey and black. So I'm just putting a little bit on my pounce pad. And then I'm going to work it in circles over my design, which is pushing the powder through the holes. 
make sure you go right to the edges with that and then you can just lift that corner up just to see if it's taken you might want to put a little bit more on it if it's not gone all the way through if you're doing this on a large design i would definitely fasten everything down but just for a small one like this you can almost see when it's gone through there's a little dot start to appear more strongly okay so then i'm going to lift it straight up you can put that powder back in the pot if you want and save that for later and you can see my design there and then you need to just join put the powder out of the way so you don't spill it everywhere you just need to join the dots up because that powder will come off if you don't so again i'm just using my permanent pen just to go over those dots join them up to make a finished design Now a little tip for you, if you can't quite see what's going on because you've got a slightly awkward bit, you can bring your design back in or even your pricking and just check what happens on that pricking there and then that will help to make sense because sometimes there can be a lot of dots in one area, like so. And then this powder, remaining powder, will just dust off, wait till your pen's dry, but you can just dust that off and that will come off as you stitch as well. Now you might ask why would I use this method rather than just tracing it on. So the um, situation where this comes in really useful, this technique, is when you want to do it on a dark fabric. So let's have a look at that now. So I've got some dark fabric, some dark navy blue here. It also works well on velvet um, and all sorts of different fabrics that you just can't trace onto or use any other method. So this is a really foolproof method. And Leonardo da Vinci used it in his map drawings as well. So it's well, well tried and tested. Um, and who are we to argue with Leonardo? So I've got my pricking again. Now I am going to oh, just need to mention this is in a frame as well. And what can happen before I do that is you can see that that bounces a little bit. So however tight you've got, there's some bounce in there. So the thing to do to get over that is to put some books underneath. And these little anchor crawl books work quite nicely. Something that fits inside the frame, and I'm just going to put them under like that, and then you can see that that bounce has disappeared. So, if you want a bit of extra stability and you're doing this on a frame, then that's one way of getting around that. So, put that back on there like that. Just put a pin in the corner just to hold it in place to show you both methods. If you're not confident to just hold that in place while you do this, you can just pin it in place like so. Now I'm going to use a white powder this time because I'm on a dark fabric. But the method's exactly the same. Round and round in circles. Need a bit more of this one. And you can just see the dots start to appear. Right to the end there that's taken now you can just lift one pin up she will take both the bottom ones out okay I'm happy that that's gone through if it hasn't you can just put it back down and put some more powder on so the great thing about this if it's not right you just dust the powder off and you can start again so you don't need to worry about getting it right first time Lift that straight up and there we go we have our design on there now Obviously that's light powder on a dark background so you would still need to join the dots up because they will come off if you don't. So you can either use a white pencil for that or you could try some paint, some acrylic paint or some watercolour paint straight out of the tube so it's not runny. And a very fine brush and you can draw those lines up to get that design on there. So that's the prick and pounce method and just before I finish I'd like to show you all of them together so you can compare them and see what they look like together. So let's have a little look at the five techniques all together just to see what they look like and I'll run through them again briefly. So this is our tracing method through a light box or on a window if you haven't got a light box. This is our carbon transfer paper or graphite paper. 
this is the iron on transfer this is the tissue paper method where we pulled all the tissue paper away and this is the prick and pounce method here so on white and on the dark fabric and you can see with the dark one I've just joined those dots up with a white gel pen so you can see what that looks like so I hope you found this video useful and um, one of those five techniques should cover you for just about every situation so if you found it um, found it helpful give us a thumbs up don't forget to click the subscribe button and the little bell as well if you want notifications of when we upload something new and we'll see you in the next video